What's happening with medical tourism in Bali? And what about the stalled Gilimanuk Mengui toll road? Stay tuned for details on these and other stories. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali in Indonesia. This is November 12th, I think, 2024. And my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today here in Kampung Bugis? Well, it is 30.1 degrees Celsius. The humidity is 71% and the wind speed is 13.4 kilometers per hour. And it's a little hazy today. But nice overall especially for november we have had some rains had a big storm the other day during my grandson's birthday party and heavy winds lots of rain and so i guess we're just about in the rainy season i know it's raining more down south but well good for bali to have some rain let's get started bali still has potential to open medical tourism provincial government eyes stem cell therapy bali still has the potential to develop medical tourism this was stated by the acting governor of bali mahendra jaya after receiving the president of the world council for preventive medicine WOCPM, Dr. Debbie Susanti Vinsky, this past Wednesday. Now, there's a lot of shifting. Many people come to seek treatment and healing in Bali, explained the acting governor. According to him, the potential for developing health tourism also includes the development of stem cell therapy. Stem cell therapy is known to be used to treat various diseases such as stroke, heart diseases, diabetes, blood disorders, and cancer, as well as in beauty treatments. Acting Governor Mahendra Jaya hopes that this stem cell therapy can be developed at Bali Mandara General Hospital. He said that the health services at the hospital were very adequate and complete. Currently, RSU Bali Mandara is developing nuclear medicine and plastic surgery services and is in the process of establishing collaboration to develop stem cell therapy. Stem cell stem cell therapy. Ooh, I can't speak today. He said, we want Bali Mandara Hospital to become a large hospital with international standards, not just national ones. Meanwhile, Dr. Debbie Susanti welcomed the plan to develop stem cell therapy at RSU Bali Mandara. The doctor even opened up opportunities for collaboration between WOCPM and the hospital for the development of stem cell therapy in Bali. The WOCPM held their second international conference in Bali from the 8th to the 10th of this month as an effort to support the development of health tourism in Bali. And more on medical tourism. Second WOCPM Congress held in Bali, pushing Indonesia to become anti-aging medical tourism destination. Ooh, anti-aging, what's that about? The World Council of Preventive Regenerative and Anti-Aging Medicine, WOCPM, officially held its second Congress in Bali. The second WOCPM is a continuation of the International Health Conference in Bali last year. The agenda of the Congress included encouraging Indonesia to become an anti-aging medical tourism destination and to support the progress of medical health tourism in Indonesia, which the government is pushing. And well, that's a good type of tourism, just my opinion. The Congress was previously held in Paris and has now been moved to Bali to support Bali as the host while also promoting Bali as a health tourism destination in line with the government's program to develop Indonesia's health tourism sector, according to the WOCPM president, Dr. Debbie Winsky. The second Congress took the theme, New Frontiers in Preventive Regenerative Medicine, Nutrition and Stem Cells, the Future World Collaboration of Health Tourism. This Congress was attended by 74 countries with a total of more than, wow, 3,000 participants who attended both online and offline. Of that number, approximately 1,000 Indonesian and foreign doctors attended the conference as well as 37 international speakers from 26 countries, including Indonesia. And they discussed advances in the field of preventive regenerative medicine and stem cells. 
This international conference is expected to be a platform for experts from various parts of the world to exchange knowledge, present the latest research, and discuss trends and innovations in the field of preventive and anti-aging medicine. In addition, the Congress is expected to be one of the largest scientific meetings in the international calendar of 2024, with a packed agenda including plenary sessions, workshops, and an exhibition of the latest technologies and innovations in the field of anti-aging. With the spirit of global collaboration and dedication to improving human health, WOCPM continues to be committed to being a leader in the field of preventive, regenerative, and anti-aging medicine. Professor Dr. Debbie added that a number of leading health issues were discussed at the Congress and supporting programs towards Golden Indonesian Health Tourism Collaboration were also discussed at the Congress. Efforts to prevent the explosion of the invalid elderly population in 2035 are through preventive and regenerative medicine. Together, we want to advance Indonesia for the world. We are ready to collaborate for health tourism. And why was I laughing? Because I had a shirt hung up on the chair behind me, which I do all the time. Ah, lupa lupa. Continuing on, Professor Tarawan welcomed the holding of the W. OCPM in Bali because speakers present were world health, health experts. Those present, he said, are world-class health experts. We are grateful that all of them collaborate with the aim of making the Indonesian IMAS 2045 program a success so that all of us Indonesian people can be in prime condition. Regarding the latest health therapies and the like that are being developed currently, Professor Terawan said that everything just needs to be seen, both new things and updates in the medical world that are put forward by experts from all over the world. And so, sounds like the conference, an interesting thing and another way to advance Indonesia's push to become a medical tourism spot in Asia. And hopefully, some of this will filter down to us normal folks that won't be able to afford an international hospital. And I've been talking about the infrastructure, the airport, uh, the road going, the shortcut road, Singaraja over there. Uh, I've been talking about all this for a while. And of course the subway and lots of plans and they're gonna get done and it's gonna cost this much money. Now, Let's go back and talk about the Gilimanuk Mengui Toll Road, which was started a couple of years ago and is still gone nowhere. AHY is still shopping for problems regarding the installed Gilimanuk Mengui Toll Road. Coordinating Minister for Infrastructure and Regional Development, Agus Yudiono, admitted that he is still shopping for problems related to the installed Gilimanuk Mengui Toll Project. This was stated after attending the Accelerating National Development Risk Management Implementation Forum event in, at the Meru in Sanur. Please understand that this coordinating ministry is new and this is only the first three weeks. Of course, in the early days we want to study the analysis of its main task better, spending problems. We want to see what the historical record is like, what kind of challenges there are, he said. He admitted that he'd received a report regarding the stalled project. He said he'll stu study it further later and will convey the latest developments on another occasion. He promised to oversee this project until it is complete. But we ensure that if there are problems that remain until today, including stalled project, unfinished construction work due to budget or other things, we will monitor them and we will communicate closely with the regional government. And I think the people in, are impacted by this would like to know as well. As is known, the Gilimanuk Mengui Toll Project has stalled since 2022 because it has not found a new investor. The government is still re-auctioning the project. The toll road is designated as a National Strategic Project, PSN, based on the regulation of the Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs in 2021, which aims to facilitate traffic from the west to the east and vice versa on the island, as well as access to tourist areas and strategic areas that are being developed. And so, still nothing there. And I've talked about this project, I don't know how many times over the last two years, four, five, six, 
and the local people have been having demonstrations and asking for information what is going on not a good sign on how quickly things are going to be gotten finished and where the money is coming from where is the money going to come from for the airport where is the money coming from for the subway i don't know is it from china is it from korea and on to education vp gibran suggests coding ai in elementary and junior high school curriculum the new vice president has tasked the Minister of Elementary and Secondary Education, Abdul Muti, to integrate coding and artificial intelligence into the curriculum for elementary and junior high school students. We must not left, be left behind by India. <laughs> Once again, to reach the golden Indonesia vision, we need a golden generation. We need more coding experts, AI experts, machine learning experts, and others, the vice president said during a coordination meeting to evaluate elementary and secondary education in South Jakarta. Minister Muti confirmed that the Ministry of Ed Elementary and Secondary Education will accommodate the Vice President's ideas incorporating coding and AI as optional subjects in the upcoming curriculum renewal. However, he emphasized that the implementation of the subjects will be limited to schools with adequate facilities. These subjects require sophisticated tools and good internet infrastructure, which not all schools currently possess. We hope this initiative will support the president's digitalization program. President Prabowo had previously expressed a keen interest in improving math education, particularly at the early stages of learning. Minister Muti revealed that the president believes mathematics is a fundamental building block for science and technology. There is a proposal, he said, to enhance mathematics teaching in grades 1 to 4 of elementary school and perhaps to introduce math education at a kindergarten level. Okay, that's a big change. And finally, one of the main problems in Bali. Landfill is full. Waste management in Karangasam has no solution. Waste management in Karangasam Regency has not been carried out optimally until now. In fact, the Bhutto's final waste disposal site, TPTA, TPA, in Buanagiri Village, is currently almost overloaded. Currently, the only landfill has a waste volume of 95%. This means that only 5% is left. With the remaining 5% of the land, it can only accommodate up to six more months of trash, according to the head of Karangasam Environmental Service, Inyo Mantari. He admitted that the waste problem in Karangasam has not been handled optimally, given the volume of waste in Karangasam, which continues to increase. If the waste is sorted, it can accommodate up to a year. Currently, the average waste shipment from Amlapura reaches 40 to 50 tons per day. This condition, he said, is quite a serious problem if the waste is not handled properly. Especially when there's a big religious holiday, the volume of waste increases up to 80 to 100 tons per day. The amount, he said, does not include waste shipments from villages that are directly dumped into the site. With this condition, we hope the community cooperation will be able to sort through household waste. He added that his party had conducted a comparative study to Bandung Regency in handling the waste problem. They use an incinerator there, he said, so the management is quite effective. His party also has coordinated with Regional Secretary of Karangasam Regency regarding the plan to procure equipment to deal with the waste. The procurement of equipment in the 2024 amendment has been approved with a value of 4 billion rupiah. Hopefully in 2025 the equipment can be added. He said, for the incinerator itself, it can only process 15 tons of waste per day. However, the impact is quite small. Environmentally friendly, however, he said, the smoke emitted is white, not black, like with other equipment. There are other trash stories. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just around the island, the landfills are filled, are getting close to being filled, and, well, proposals, proposals, proposals. A lot of words and not a lot of action on this very serious problem that affects those of us that live here all the time, as well as tourists that come in and see trash over the island and love to comment on it on social media. Okay, that is it for today. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Take care. <laughs> And I will see you not tomorrow, day after tomorrow. <laughs> okay, bye. Take care of yourself.